The first day I arrived in Abima, a nine-year-old girl committed suicide. First of all, the child shouldn't know what the word means, let alone do it. The next day there was a murder in Montana. From May to October, there are 174 shootings. In 2006, there were 300 shootings. Recently, you may have heard of a young child, 22 months old, got shot during a drive-by shooting. The community is made up of 13,000 people, 52.8% of those are under the age of 18. 80.7% are unemployed. Gang violence is rampant. It is a war zone. There are 13 active gangs in Habima. Shootings are common. Stabbings are common. The average caseload per member in the RCMP nationwide is 60. In Habima, it's 279. The young men and women whom I took ownership of in May 2005, worked their little butts off. They put their lives in danger to protect this fine community. And please don't get the wrong impression about Arbima. It's a dangerous place, yes, but it's also a great place. So we had to do something. And my boss, who you heard from yesterday, uh, Doug Rady, he was an inspector then, now he's a chief superintendent. Makes a lot more money than I do now. <laughs> Charged me with a task. And that task was to help the youth of Abima. We had to give these kids something to belong to, to be proud of. The kids belong to something because they, at home, they go home to complete dysfunction. For example, um, one of my corporals um, went to a home one night and the father was arrested and there were five siblings left or five children left. And while they're waiting for social services to arrive to look after them, she started getting the kids cleaning up the house. And she went to a closet amongst all this squalor, and there on a cardboard box was a folded cadet uniform with a shiny pair of boots. So it tells a story. These kids are positive. And they come twice a week and on weekends and other functions to be part of this family they cling to. And the stories they tell, normally I'll bring kids with me, and the stories they tell would break your heart. Suicide, intimidation, gang warfare. But they come to a positive place and they wear a uniform, they belong to something. Now at a, a function recently, I was showing a film, I'll show you a clip of this film that was made of us called Shades of Blue. And the kids were asked questions on the stage by the audience, about 600 people. And Alicia Saddleback was asked, what, uh, why did she join the Cadet Corps? And how it has changed her life and what she plans to do? Well, there's only one rule in the Kareko, and that is you must attend full-time school. So she said, before the Kareko came along, my grades were failing and my attendance was poor. Now it's 100% and my grades are 90%. She showed me her report card, like a proud daughter to a proud father. Look, Sergeant, look, Sergeant. And she said, I now want to join the RCMP. And she pointed at me and said, because he's my inspiration. That's the only accolade I need from a child. I don't need medals. I don't need any more accolades, just acceptance by that kid. And myself and Richard Huslack, who is not here today, run the program. And we walked through the stores in Wetaskiwin or Habima and even Edmonton. And kids come up and stand to attention. Hi, Sergeant. Hi, Sergeant. And the parents wave at us. When I first got there in May, I didn't know a soul. Now I know 1,010, uh, 1,020 kids, the siblings, the, the mothers and fathers and the grandparents, and that makes me proud. Now what do we do in the cadet corps? We teach them drill. Now we teach them drill because it instills discipline. They must have discipline when we teach them the archery and the shooting and the self-defense. And discipline breeds something in a person. It's self-reliance, pride, as he mentioned. And when you see these kids, as you're going to right now, you will see what I mean. They are amazing. This next clip is the first anniversary parade of the Habima Community Cadet Corps. Good, good kids. They make me proud and they make themselves and their families proud and they make the nation of Abima, the Muscatees, very proud too. Amazing kids. The, uh, 
There are lots and lots of stories that I could tell you. Normally this takes me two hours to do because it gets quite emotional. Um, the kids come to this twice a week and the age group was supposed to be 12 to 18, but every night we'd see uh, the siblings come with them. So, and they were practicing saluting and marching and wanting to get involved with the shooting and the archery and the uh, Duke of Edinburgh's award or whatever. So we dropped it down and I didn't know it had been dropped down until one night I was walking along the ranks of the troops and, and uh, I looked down and I went, there's this little kid like that. I said, how old are you? He went, <laughs> and uh, so we let, we got, we got from five to 18. And uh, <laughs> some of the teachers of the schools asked me, uh, how do you manage 400 kids on the floor at a time? Well, it's called discipline and it's called respect. And all I have to do is say, Trap! and there's instant silence and instant submission. Don't worry, I, I don't scare them. I remember Doug mentioned it yesterday that one of the uh, guys from our original police and came to uh, one of our first drill displays and said, uh, what do the chiefs think about you screaming at their kids? <laughs> well, it's called discipline. And as Doug mentioned yesterday, if I have to give them heck for doing something wrong, before they leave, I'll give them a hug too. You know? So that's important. There are lots of hugs going around. Amazing kids, and they're really coming out of the shell. And they come to these programs we do, the Traveling Roadshow, and they talk and they pour their hearts out because somebody is willing to listen. They found a forum where somebody will listen to their problems of finding their mother or father hanging in the closet, or the daughters, or the sorry, sisters hanging in the closet, or in the basement, which is quite common, or it used to be quite common. One of my cadet leaders, when she first joined the cadet corps at one of these forums, she blew me out of the water. She said, uh, well, my experience is that me and my three kids, a single parent, were spiraling down to suicide before the cadet corps came along. Now she's one of my instructors, and both, all three of her kids are in the cadet corps. So the messages got out in the community, and the messages got out around the country and the world. These kids are the ambassadors for their nation. I tell them constantly that they are going to be the future leaders of their nation the future leaders of the province and the future leaders of this country. Some very astute person said just recently to me that the cadet corps is the oak tree that holds Habima together. And eventually it will spawn acorns and those little acorns will drop off and grow and they will be the leaders. And the acorns is, is those little cadets, or some of them quite big actually. Well, the violence in Habima has taken its toll on the community, the members of the RCMP, in fact, just last Thursday, I was diagnosed with a, um, a chronic case of post-traumatic stress disorder. And it, it's quite difficult to be here, in fact, amongst people. If this program can help one kid, I've achieved my aim. Ladies and gentlemen, the Habima Collective.